Please excuse my hair change, my clothes change, the light change and audio change that happens throughout this video because I literally couldn't settle on one thing and then I have ultimately mashed it all together, so. <laughs> Don't say a word. I'm warning you. I'm not gonna do anything. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. <laughs> It's, it's been like three months. <laughs> I hope your summer or your winter was good depending on the hemisphere you reside in. I'm gonna be showing you how I made my Inosuke cosplay today. If you want to just skip right to the creation process. Every night. I made this a while back. I made it right when he was first introduced in the anime. That was the moment I went. <laughs> Where, you know, I think maybe we share something. I don't know. I don't know why I, I feel so connected to him in a way. Uh, I, I don't know what it could possibly be. Loud, fast, and stupid. That's like my criteria. Yep. Before I get started, the reason why these costumes are kind of like really rushed and quick and like I personally feel like when I make a costume, if I rush it or if I take a lot of time, the result for me personally is exactly the same. So I'm like, I'm just gonna rush it. I'm gonna do things a little all over the place and if that's like your style and your vibe, cool. <laughs> It's if you can if you can if you can absorb any information from any of these videos that I make, I fuck yeah, awesome. That makes me so happy. If you can't, ha. Huh. If you watch this and you're like what the fuck? I've put a ton of tutorials down below of other creators who have done something similar or who have made better tutorials to follow. This is just how I did it. If you are ready to come on this journey with me, I don't know what this is, but I'm gonna keep doing it. Cool. Side tangent completely. I've been making fairy houses and like little fairy things. If you guys would wanna see videos and crafting videos on that, let me know. They're very good for my mind. If you watch Demon Slayer, who is your favorite character? Let me know down below if you choose anyone besides Tanjiro or Nosuke. With that, let's get started. Hang on, I'm gonna go get a drink really quick. <laughs> Alright, guess you the chapstick. You're going down. You think you can make a boar head better than me? <laughs> Not on my watch. Jeff is a butt wagon. Think she can just come in here and become me? Hey, 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 get out of here, critically acclaimed voice actor Bryce Pappenbrook, also known for the voice of Aaron Yeager and Kirito. I will surpass you, Get out of here! Shoo! Shoo! <sighs> Anyways. Alright, let's get started. I started with the Nosuke's boar mask helmet thing. He wears a boar mask, he was raised in the mountains, this lad is feral. Feral boy. Stupid boy. Head empty boy. I honestly had no idea what I, was, what I was doing with the mask. I found something of a similar shape, taped it up, drew out the pattern, and then cut it out and laid it onto EVA foam. You could also take two of those foam floral balls and stick them together, wrap them up in saran wrap, and then pattern it off of that. Just something that has a, like a larger circle and then a smaller circle side by side. You could also definitely look into some furry tutorials because furries have got it down! This is essentially a furry head, so check them out. They are very skilled. I will also link, though, a ton of Nosuke head tutorials down below in case you're looking at this and you're like why do I keep coming back to this fucking channel I never learn anything yes links down below more talented creators I used three millimeter foam for most of this just for a little bit more stability cut out the patterns glued them together and then took some time to really work and shape the head to what I needed I realized really early on that this wasn't gonna look exactly like his uh, head from the anime or manga and it was gonna look more like a cursed real life boar head and I was like that's my vibe I like that I was just guessing and, and working with what I had because it was just gonna be covered in fur anyway and fur hides so many mistakes so I wasn't really worried about the placement of the foam or any additional cuts and stuff I made because I would just layer a bunch of fur on top and glue it down I was really zooming on this, so I wasn't really worried about the placement of the fur or anything, or, or the foam. I was just cutting and making adjustments as I went. If you want to take the time to sew the pieces individually and then place them on, you totally can do that. Or you can just fucking wing it. Doesn't matter, have fun. So pig head. Because while uh, fur hides a lot of sins, um, you can fuck it up a little bit. So just, you know, just do you. 
I'm the most passive, like, <laughs> tutorial creator. Yeah, you know, just, you know, do what you want to do. Uh, have fun. <laughs> Whatever, dude. <laughs> For the tip of the snout, I just took two pieces of thick EVA foam, glued it together, cut it into a warbly triangle, and then sanded down the edges. I then took my soldering iron, wear a mask, and bored out the snout holes. You could also sculpt it with foam clay. I honestly made my snout a little too big, but... Who <laughs> cares? Okay, I am making an anime dude's boar head. We are pretty much out of our depth as far as what's supposed to be going on here in life, so whatever. I then shifted the snout a little bit and then glued the nose onto the snout. I did a lot of fur trimming in between, gluing the fur on just to make sure I was covering all the foam pieces and I could line up the fur exactly with the other fur. I noticed the snout was a little too angled forward and not too much upright, which his little snows is his nose. So I pinched the snout on the top to turn the nose upward a bit more. I even took off the nose and re-glued it back on after making the snout more narrow, which is totally fine because then you figure out that a better way works and you can redo it and it's fine. Don't be stressed if you have to redo something. It's fine. Unless it's not okay because you're on a time crunch because you're trying to get something done for a con and you're realizing that you're crunching and then you don't finish your costume and then you get to the con and then you have a conversation with your friends about how oh, con crunch is actually really terrible but then you realize that without a healthy amount of pressure you won't get any projects done and so then things just start to pile up and your brain starts to melt and then you make a big head and then you realize it's all about a healthy balance. <clears throat> For the ears, I took some EVA foam, cut some white triangles, covered those with fur, and then glued them on. For the fur of the ear, I took some light pink fur and then that same gray. I used the pink for the tips of the ears, which I would add some paint to to deepen the pink a bit more later on. I took some thinning shears to kind of shape them up a little bit since they were so fluffy and we needed to see the shape. I took a watered down solution of red acrylic paint and just kind of brushed it gently through the fur ears and then blended it out with a little brush. This helped bring a little bit of the color back and make it a little bit more pop. You could also use an airbrush machine. If you're going to use the acrylic paint method, just make sure to brush the paint through the fur before it dries otherwise it might end up clumpy. To attach the ears, I'm sorry Mike, uh, to attach the ears I just hot glued them straight onto the head. Uh, make sure you hold that on there so that the furs fuse with the fibers of the glue. Here's a quick view of everything we've got so far. As you can see it definitely doesn't look like his head verbatim but it, you can tell it's a pig head. So I kind of want to redo it. Because then I would have to! Ah! I then added some fur around the base of the head just so I could cover my neck when I wore it. Just hot glue! <laughs> For the eyes, I thought about doing it a couple ways and included my other attempts in case you are like, ah, this way is better. First, I sketched out a general shape for the socket area of the eye onto foam after sketching a pattern with plastic wrap and tape from the head. I used 2mm foam for the base so I could shape it a little easier and it wouldn't be as bulky. I took an existing gem that I had, I thought would make a good eye circle size and traced around it and then cut the piece out of foam. I then made a slightly bigger one so that the foam piece could sit over top of the eyeball comfortably. You like vocaloids? Okay. I then sandwiched the foam in between two pieces of black warble and while it was still hot kind of molded it around the large resin gem. Inosuke is often drawn animated with these lines in his socket, so I took some brown warbler and then made the lines of long strips of brown warbler. I ended up really liking the added depth that it added to the eyes because they just look... <laughs> I initially thought I'd be using resin gems for the eyes, which I still wish I'd have figured out and used, but oh well. So I'll leave this bit in here for you in case you wanted to opt for that. If I had chosen to do this a better way, I would have printed out a picture of his pupil and then just placed that on the back of a clear resin gem to give the illusion of a glass eye. But I'm dumb and didn't do that and only thought of that just now. If you do that, do it. Make me proud. The route I ended up taking was painting the inside of some plastic clear ornaments. That way I could gradient the color on the outside and then do some detailing with black Sharpie on the outside and the result is... Cursed. I really liked this paint job because it made the eyes look extra dead because granted, he's wearing a dead boar hair. Boar, boar head. He's wearing a dead boar head skin. I then placed and glued the eye sockets on top of the plastic ball eyes and then placed them into the head. I was sure to reinforce with a lot of glue and add some extra fur detailing around the edge so I can kind of squish it up into the socket to hide any of the extra bits. The color fabric I chose was again still a little bit too gray so I went in with some tan airbrush to brighten up the colors and then some detailing around the eyes, the nose, lightened up the ears, and the snout. I used a pet fur brush from the dollar store, thank you furries, to brush out the fur before it would dry so that the paint didn't mat it and then I went back and detailed the eye sockets again. For the tusks, I just took some more leftover scrap warbler, rolled it up into two little tusk shapes. Save all your warbler. Save it! Brother, help me! Long live the king.
To attach the tusks, I heated the end of them up with my heat gun and stabbed some wire into the ends and then used a soldering iron to straight up bore two holes into the side of his face, which I then threaded the tusk wire through to attach the other tusk to the other side. I don't know why I did it this way. I don't know. Make your tusk out of foam clay so it's light so you can just glue it straight on. I think it's because I didn't trust my positioning. I don't know. Even all... <laughs> Boop. Even after all this, I still repainted the snout and did some more detailing on the ears and everything, but I was very happy with it. Yeah! Ah! Wait. Jess, how do you see? What was that? <laughs> I could not. At all. Follow another tutorial! Right now! <laughs> Next were the pants! These were super easy to make. Just take a fabric, use a basic harem style pillow. What? Hello? Pant style pattern, cut it out, and sew it together. You're gonna wanna make your pants a lot bigger than what actual pant size pants would be so that they can become nice and poofy when you add elastic to the bottom. So it looks ridiculous to begin with. Run right away! To make pants have that cool poofy leg vibe, sew a fold into the bottom of the leg to the pants. Feed a piece of elastic through there. Tighten up the elastic kind of like a scrunchie, but enough for your leg to fit through. Then just sew the two ends of the elastic together. For his hip flop fur, I literally just took a tube of this tan color and wrapped it around my waist on the day. Easy. <laughs> Next it was time for the shoes! Inosuke has these little blue tufts of fur at the top of the shoe and the bottom of the shoe. So I cut out some pieces, cut some triangles into the back of the fur, and then used the brush to brush out any of the excess fur. <laughs> for his actual shoe part, I took a piece of fabric, folded it over, and then cut out a sock looking thing. Then sewed those two together, turned them inside out again, and boom! Leg socky thingies. I made sure to cut a semicircle for the heel, and then pinned it all together and sewed it all together. Because I am I did not use a stretch fabric, which would have been better for these boots. So I made these rectangle panels and saw some holes to put eyelets in so they would become lace up sock boot things. I lined up the squares with the back of the sock and it ended up becoming a really unnecessary detail but I really liked the way it looked so boom! Bam, bam. <laughs> Finally for the bottom of the shoe I just took a pair of cheap sandals and wore those at the same time. I used these as a sock and the sandals as the floor. Uh, floor? I also added this little privacy panel for the back of the boots so when you lace it up you wouldn't see your calves. I forgot to record it but I just did a loop stitch for the fur on the top and the bottom and the heel. <laughs> Because he's bare chested, I just did a really simple wrap around my chest. I glued it down on the day so nothing would fly out and boom, done. No loose tits on the day of the shoot, mate. <laughs> then it was time for the wig. I took a dark blue wig and teased the ever loving shit out of it with a teasing brush and got to be glued hairspray. I then took some colored tint and tinted the bottom light blue. This worked, but it didn't exactly give me the, the, the punch of color I needed. So I ended up just sewing in a lighter blue wig underneath. I left this in just in case you want to use this technique for any other wig projects or whatever going on, so learn from my mistakes. Learn from my mistakes! <laughs> High key though, there are a ton of Inosuke wigs available to buy online, so if you want to buy your own, just do that, it's easier. Oh my god, look at her. Oh, she thinks she's doing something. <laughs> Christy! Swords! Uh, Rage Gear Props has an awesome and easy to follow mini tutorial that I found on their Instagram and that's how I did the swords. I just followed that. Rage Gear Props, honestly, I appreciate any other human who can do things, who can just put things together in a cohesive way and then just post it for people to follow. So thank you. Fuck. It's amazing. I just ordered these swords on Amazon. They're kind of like a weird foam material that made it super easy to cut into. I took some cardstock, measured out where I wanted my little notches to be, and then sketched out those notches. I then cut into them and then traced onto the swords. Then carefully took my blade and cut out the chunks. Please be careful when you do this. I almost sliced myself so many times. I then took some wraps and wrapped up the handle in the sheath and airbrushed it to give it some more depth. Ma'am? And that was it! You finished the video. <laughs> you finished the video, awesome. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for being here and thank you so much for just partaking in whatever that was. And I know I say this all the time after every video, but I really appreciate you guys hanging out and watching these videos and just allowing me to come back every three months to be like, I made this. And you guys are like, very cool, Jess. <laughs> and then if you aren't into this kind of content, you know where to find me.
You can follow me on Twitter or Instagram. There are a ton of cosplayers I have linked down below. Some new people to follow who are talented and amazing. So please check them out if you have time. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. Uh, I hope you have a good day. Okay, bye.